this short video, we'll go through the appropriate and effective steps in the application of acrylic paint to sculpture. There are a wide array of finishes that can be achieved with acrylics. In this video, we will be giving the ceramic portrait a realistic and lifelike finish. Acrylic paint is a versatile and handy finishing medium for 3D artwork. A fast drying paint containing pigments suspended in an acrylic polymer emulsion. Acrylic paint can be diluted with water but becomes water resistant when dry. Depending on how much the paint is diluted with water or modified with acrylic gels, media, or paste, the finished acrylic work has its own unique characteristics not attainable with other media. In order to successfully paint your sculpture with acrylics, there are a few supplies that are essential. Water is critical when using acrylic paints. Water is used to dilute paint and can be used in aiding the flow of paint over your prepared surface. Primer is a preparatory coating used on material before painting. Priming ensures proper adhesion of paint to your surface and increases your paint's overall durability. Paint palette can be any rigid water resistant surface utilized for mixing paints. Paint, the most essential ingredient, can be found in a wide array of colors and finishes. When selecting paint for sculpture, it is essential to have at least the most basic of colors and then begin to acquire more obscure colors as needed. Palette knives are used for mixing pigments on the palette. They can be as simple as popsicle sticks. Disposable brushes are more than adequate for painting on three-dimensional surfaces but a few decent brushes are useful when trying to achieve more specific details. A piece of cardboard or some other disposable surface that can be used to test paint on is always handy. This is useful when adjusting the amount of paint being applied to your surface. Disposable gloves and aprons are useful because painting sculptures can be messy. Keeping hands and clothes clean, if a priority, is something that will need to be accounted for before painting is started. Painting sculpture is an effective way of giving both life and depth to a piece. Take your time and layer up the paint slowly to create the desired surface finish. Soaking more porous pieces, such as ceramic sculpture and water, Prior to applying paint helps to limit moisture transfer from paint to your sculpture. This is important in order to ensure proper adhesion of the paint to your work. Soaking is easily accomplished by fully immersing your piece in a bucket of water. If the piece is too large to be fully immersed, spray with a hose or apply water directly with a sponge. When using spray on primer or spray paint, it is important to be in a well ventilated area and to use the proper safety equipment. Applying spray paint is an effective way to cover large surface areas evenly and quickly. Remember not to rush. Keep a fair distance away from the subject being painted and try to avoid over applying too much paint to any one area. Instead, make even lighter coats to the whole piece. Larger or more complicated pieces may require more than one coat. There are two techniques that we will be using primarily in this video. Washing is a technique used to cover large areas of a sculpture with diluted color. It can be then wiped away, leaving pigment only in the recesses of your piece. Dry brushing, on the other hand, allows for application of the lightest amount of color to the high spots on your sculpture. Establishing a painting strategy early will ensure the success of your final surface finish. Approaching the whole piece in the beginning with the neutral warm wash will help in establishing the definition of the portrait. After the initial wash, 
you can remove excess paint with a towel or a paper towel. Next, we can begin to apply thicker layers of lighter colors to establish the lightness of the portrait's blonde hair. Then we begin to fine tune the hair with a series of dry brush layers and diluted washes. It is okay to get paint on other elements of the piece. These blemishes will be addressed as the painting process continues. When the hair color and density are established, move on to the face. Skin is not an easy texture to recreate. To avoid having the skin look flat and opaque, remember to layer up the paint slowly to establish the translucent quality of skin. Start with cooler colors and then begin to layer up warmer colors. Use your final overall skin tone lightly by diluting the paint or by using a dry brush. Take your time. Brushing the application of acrylic paint can lead to the removal of preliminary layers and create exposed gaps in the painted surface. This is the time where a few decent brushes are useful. When painting into visually tight surfaces or when approaching the subtleties of the final skin tones and touches. The last of the details on the face are usually done with a small fine brush, touching up the subtle differences of warm and cool colors in the final skin tones. Finally, the tackling of fabric. Simple fabrics are easily painted, usually only requiring two or three layers of paint. Between establishing the final layers of paint, start to go back and address the overlapping painted surfaces. Touch up those spots, for instance, where the skin tone overlaps the hair color. Now is the time to differentiate the painted surfaces of your sculpture. Let's finish the green fabric of the shirt with a dusty dry brush of yellow. After applying acrylic paint to your sculpture, you should have a finished piece with a new layer of depth and realness. By applying paint, you have added a new dimension to your three-dimensional object. Mm -hmm.